we have so many of these discussions, and every once in a while I'll say something and Andrew will nod, and, and, and he'll right. say something and I'll, I'll nod. And one thing that, that Andrew did say recently was maybe there is a way to incentivize um, capital uh, investment rather than just trying to juice your stock price and, and get it higher so that you, you, know, you get your... Uh, you know, you hit your bonuses as a CEO. Yeah. I mean, is there yeah. anything to that? Yeah, there absolutely is. You know what is a good way to incentivize investment? How about full expensing on capital expenditures and mean? a lower marginal rate on corporations? That's exactly what we did in our tax reform. And what's the result? Massive wave of increased capital expenditures uh, and tremendous economic growth and tremendous demand for new workers and now rising wages as well. Like, I'm not sure what the problem is we're trying to solve here. Yes, there have been stock buybacks, too, because, in part, we also fixed the flaw in the international component of our tax uh, regime so that companies can bring that money back home without experiencing another penalty layer of tax. So some companies literally had more cash than they could reasonably deploy, so they did the sensible thing, return it to the people who own the company. So uh, I, I, just, I just don't get this... Uh, uh, the alarm over a perfectly normal, healthy aspect of a market economy. Senator, uh, what was your view? If, if you remember when, uh, under, President, under President Bush, uh, there was a, an effort to, to bring back uh, and repatriate capital, and part of that repatriation was, was tied to capital expenditures, with the idea being that what we really wanted to do was build factories and, and invest, as opposed to buybacks. Um, which was a, which do you think is a, a better better approach? Look, it's much better not to have government dictating what a company should do with, with its own money. What we ought to do is have incentives as neutral as possible. Uh, what we have right now, I think, makes all the sense in the world. Being able to fully expense a capital expenditure, what more incentive can you provide? And then having a lower marginal rate on the return you make on that investment, that's what makes us competitive. You know, there are times when a buyback is a perfectly rational thing. And by the way, as, as we all know, most of that money simply gets reinvested somewhere else. It's a great exercise in reallocating capital. You know, there are new companies being formed every day, companies growing, companies that really need capital. If someone's sitting on a boatload of cash that is beyond the ability of, of their, uh, to, to make a productive investment with, by all means, return it to the shareholders Senator, Senator, and let the shareholders know, reallocate. I don't know how you legislate this, what I'm about to say next, but what do you do about companies that have what, what might be described as underfunded pensions and, and other liabilities, for example, uh, where at the same time you see them pursuing buybacks, and three, five years later, all of a sudden they end up in bankruptcy, and guess, who's, guess who was holding the bag, actually? All of us, taxpayers. Yeah, so I think, first of all, you should put underfunded pensions in a different category than most other liabilities. Most other liabilities, um, the investor went in knowing what they were, what they were dealing with, banks and, and uh, debt holders. Pensions are for employees, and they don't have the ability to kind of do the, you know, the due diligence and walk away from a bad deal if that's what they're getting. So I, I think it's legitimate to consider that separately and consider the circumstances under which we require companies to fully fund their pensions. You know, Congress has passed legislation making that problem worse. And of course, the private sector problem, which does exist, is a tiny, minuscule fraction of what we have in municipal and state government. But I think you raise a valid point. Uh, pensions should be properly funded. Senator, it sounds like you, you believe that buybacks hit the record that we saw in 2018, which is $1.1 $1 trillion because of that initial repatriation of cash that really added to the coffers. Companies didn't know what to do. They bought back shares. So by extrapolation, should 2019 see a decline in buybacks? And if we don't, will you say that maybe there is a problem here in terms of companies not spending that money on, on capital expenditures, so, on factories, so, on workers, et cetera? Yeah, so I'm glad you raised this point because this is where the, the fundamental flaw, I think, in Senator Rubio's underlying premise here. And that is this notion that a buyback comes at the expense of a viable, profitable return on an alternative investment that could be made. That's not the way business managers uh, run their business. They're making every good investment they can. Their goal is to maximize the return they can make. And it's only when they've exhausted all of those possibilities and they still have cash that they then make that allocation. I do expect that we'll see stock, stock buybacks diminish somewhat because I do think part of it was driven by the repatriation. But I don't see buybacks as a problem. They occur right. after the investment has been made, and then investors take that money and they reinvest it. 
Senator, uh, in large part, this conversation about buybacks and everything else seems to stem in part from the, the, the tax bill and, and from what people perceive as uh, loopholes that, and, 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 and a society that isn't working or a code that isn't working. Uh, we've talked about it with you before. I'm curious if you have a different view today. Uh, one of the things that was going to be in that tax plan a year ago that, that uh, the president even uh, pushed for and for inexplicable reasons to me at least uh, didn't show up was the issue of carried interest. Do you, do you have a take on whether carried interest is still a loophole that should be fixed? Um, so I, I feel pretty strongly that we ought to consistently take appreciated assets and tax the gain on that at a capital gains rate. That's what happens with carried interest. And so I, I think it's better to keep it roughly the way it is. We did make some changes. Yeah, I think we lengthened the holding period for assets uh, that's necessary to get the carried interest treatment. But you know, I think uh, taxing a gain on an asset as a capital gain at a lower rate makes sense. When you said earlier that the, we've had a, an explosion in capital investment, I, that, that's what we're waiting for, isn't it, Senator? What, what's missing? What, what, that's been disappointing, is it not? No, I don't think so at all. We had one, one quarter where the number was off a little bit. We'll see what uh, I expect that that probably comes back. But we had a tremendous year for CapEx in 2018. I think that's driven a lot of, uh, a lot of the economic growth. It's going to continue to enhance productivity. It's part of why wages are growing for workers. Um, no, I think that's working exactly as we had hoped. Hmm. Um, Senator, just in the, the political, uh, the backdrop of everything we're, we're seeing right now, what, what are you uh, expecting uh, when, when you're in a you know, closed uh, room with, with some of your associates? Who are they going to run, uh, the Democrats, uh, in, in 2020? <laughs> what, what, what do you think of this whole spectacle that, that we're seeing right now? How's it going to play out, do you think? Is it going to be way left? Are they going to come back to Biden, or is he too old? Or how do you think so, it's going to? So, look, let me let me absolutely guarantee that I do not have a crystal ball for this. Uh, I can say it is amazing how far this leftward lurch has gone. You know, this Green New Deal is like unbelievable that anyone would take this as a serious set of proposals, and yet every Democratic presidential candidate that I know of, at least from among my Senate colleagues, has endorsed it. This is unbelievable.